So now we're going to continue our look at breathing as a process of respiration by entitling the next flowchart, Breathing 2. And here what we're going to now be focusing on is more specifically what's going to be happening at each lung during breathing. Remember, the lungs are found in a pair, they're spongy, they're elastic, and that's going to be represented through what happens at each of them during the breathing process. So let's take a look. What we first need to understand is that each lung is going to be enclosed, so we'll write this down, each of them is going to be enclosed by a double-walled sac. So there's going to be this sac-like covering on each lung with two walls, an interior, an inner wall, and an outer wall. That's going to be known as the pleural membrane. So each lung is surrounded by a pleural membrane. A pleural membrane at each lung will contain an inner layer. That inner layer of the sac, that inner layer of the pleural membrane, is going to be in direct contact with the lungs. That's why it's on the inside. So we state that that inner layer of the sac adheres to the lungs directly. Whereas the other wall, the outer layer of this pleural membrane, the outer layer of this sac, the outer layer is going to adhere to the thoracic cavity. So we'll write that down. Adheres to the outsides of the lungs, basically, um, to the thoracic cavity. So now, there's a specific reason why we have a pleural membrane arranged in such a way. Why one part of the pleural membrane is connected to the outside, one is connected to the inside. In order to understand that, we basically have to look at the continuation of breathing. When you have both of these working together, you also notice that they're going to be separated. The pleural, the in, inner pleural and outer pleural membranes will be separated by a thin space filled with fluid by a thin fluid-filled space. Okay, so this is a key here. It's a fluid-filled space. Remember the idea of moist environments. This is going to come up again. So we have this thin fluid-filled space, and it's thin, so it can easily things can easily pass through it. It's not too thick, so it's easy for things to diffuse. This fluid itself has what is known as a surface tension. So the fluid has a surface tension. This is just something that allows for the fluid to essentially cause the two layers to stick together. It causes both the outer layer and the inner layer of the pleural membrane causes those layers to stick together. But the reasoning behind this is not just to have a connection between both of them or this sort of sticking together idea, but it also is going to, this fluid specifically, allow both layers to slide past one another, but also not easily be pulled apart. It's basically the perfect amount of stickiness that's provided by this fluid-like material that's going to ensure that both of these layers, the outer and inner layers surrounding both lungs, effectively function. And the overall culminating, of function, uh, culminating function of this pleural membrane at each lung within breathing as a whole is going to be the following. The outer layer that's contacting the thoracic cavity, so outer layer contacting the thoracic cavity or TC, plus the inner layer, and what is that contacting? That's contacting the lungs directly, contacting the lungs. Both of these are going to all change volume, all change their volume together. That's the key here. What does this mean? This simply means that when inhalation happens, everything that's connected or contacting the thoracic cavity and everything that's contacting the lungs will expand accordingly and together because we're doing inhalation. And then when we're doing exhalation, when we're decreasing the volume of this area that's containing air, 
these things, the outer layer and the inner layer contacting these two respective areas, are also going to decrease their collective volume together. It basically ensures that breathing is a, is a simultaneous and very much connected process between both lungs at the same time functioning in almost exactly the same way. Be sure to take a look at figure 42.27 to really drive home this point. So that covers our look at what's going on at each lung during breathing. In the next video, uh, we're going to continue our discussion on breathing by explaining how breathing is controlled.